Another important and useful tool in Microsoft Word is the ability to label images di and diagrams and tables, which is essential. There's no point having a diagram or an image or a table that isn't labelled because no one, will know, no one knows what it's for. And if you don't have it labelled, it makes it hard to refer to in your text. Because in your text you should be referring to tables or diagrams or images by, by writing that. By writing in image 1, we can see that the uh, couple is happy, for example. Or table 3 shows the uh, nationality of actors in Home and Away. Rather than saying above or below or on the next page, which when you continue continue to work on your document and reformat, reformat, you may find those images have moved, which then makes your information hard to follow. Where you've said oh, in the diagram above, which all of a sudden is actually on another page. So that's one of the reasons we label them, label them with titles. Now, in order to do that, is actually in references a button called insert caption. So first of all, I'm going to copy and paste the picture so we have something to work with. Okay, now obviously I want it a lot smaller than that. Okay. Now the other thing is when you're using pictures in a text, like a report or something, you actually want them to fit to the page. So what we should do is wrap the text. Okay, so square will mean that I can type next to it. So that's where I would be typing my analysis or my discussion. Okay, we actually want to label this document and we're going to reference it as well. Okay, so we go back to references and we insert a caption. Notice that the picture's highlighted. Okay, at this stage we're going to call it figure one, but we can actually, if we wanted to change the label, so say I wanted to call it image one, I would type that in there. Okay, but I'm going to do that. But I do want some more information in there. It's not really helpful to just have figure one. Okay, and you can see I've got a bit more information in there. Okay, and you can see that actually now is directly below the box. Now if I move the box around, it doesn't go with it, so you've got to be very careful about doing that. But it is actually in its own little box, so you can move it around. But not only do I want that information in there, I obviously didn't create this, so I need to reference it as well. So back to referencing. Same principles apply, but it's very important that you realise that a picture needs to be referenced correctly, which is a, a mistake that many students make. They find, for example, I got this picture off Google Images, and a lot of students will say, "Oh, it's just from Google Images," which implies that I read every, I looked at every image on Google, which obviously I didn't. Okay, so I need to go and add a new source. I'm going to go back into the image, right? and got some information here about where it's from but let's visit the page yep takes a little bit more time than just writing uh, Google Images okay right so this is the page where it supposedly comes from so same principles as before okay unfortunately this one page is a little bit hard to follow Alright, so this is from a blog, looks like. It's from a, yep, it's from a WordPress blog, so not the most reliable of sources, but it's just where we got this picture. So, right.
notice I'm just copying and pasting the information rather than typing it. Obviously I have to type this information in here when I'm looking at it. Oops. Notice that months get capital letters. Okay, now the author for this may be a little bit tricky to find. Okay, alright. Okay, so just be careful when down the bottom. Sometimes you'll see something like this theme F Spring designed by Frederick Filestud. Now that is not actually the creator of the web page, that's the creator of the backgrounds for, for the whole web page. This is a WordPress page, so that's just the theme created for WordPress by somebody. It's got nothing to do with the actual content, which is what we are interested in. So looking at this, doesn't look like there is an obvious author. Alright, so we're going to say Mondo Works Publishing is the author, which is a company. I might take that out of there. Okay. Right, and then you'll see we now have the referencing for the image in below the cover page, below the, the image. And that applies whether you're using a table. Now, obviously, a table, generally you create those, but then you become the author. Right, so generally use the interview um, tab when you're creating a, a citation. So if you choose from the drop down boxes interview and you make yourself the interviewee normally to show you the the author same with surveys okay and that's it